Hey everybody, welcome back to the YouTube version of Podcast of the Dragon. My name is Morgan, and this is the part of the show where I am a lot more visible and a lot less prepared, and I talk about the Wheel of Time on Prime. So, this is my react video to episode 4 of the Wheel of Time, The Dragon Reborn, and it is really, really late because my laptop got way too overwhelmed with the steamy, steamy chemistry between Lon and Niney, and it completely overheated and shut down about three quarters of the way, you know, maybe even four fifths of the way through the episode. And I have never been so grateful that I'm a little behind on my technology game and I haven't yet figured out how to bypass Amazon's thing where they don't like to let you do the screen recording. So I've been doing the whole like double camera thing where I record on the side with my cell phone so that I have a recording of my laptop screen and I've been doing that not because I'm trying to be clever about bypassing the copyright checks, but actually just because I still don't know how to do a screen record of Amazon Prime. I know that there is software to bypass their little screen record blocking. I just haven't learned it yet. So I've never been so grateful that I haven't learned it yet, A, and B, that I was wearing pants at the time that I recorded it, because that little side view you can totally see, and if I hadn't been wearing pants, well, I would have been really sad. Anyway, so I do actually still have footage of my React video, it's just a frontal profile of me. Thankfully, I also am doing the audio using the cell phone footage, so I actually really lucked out. So you have my genuine reactions, you just don't get to see my lovely facial expressions until the very end, which I guess is okay since the best part is the battle, and so you get to see me go about all the explosions. So I decided to still put this video out. Um, I'm probably just gonna have my face right there so that you can see my face, even though it's not actually the face of me reacting in real time, um, and then you're just gonna have my profile, and you'll get to see a great view of my tattoo, so that's something. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this react video. Sorry once again that you're not getting the frontal view of my face, at least not until the very end, but here is my review of The Dragon Reborn, which was a stellar episode that I very much enjoyed, and let me uh, give you my real-time react to Nine even her braids flying in the air like a raging sun. Nice. Okay, really appreciate the start in with the castle and everything being dropped right into this battle and telling us right away that this is Gaeldon when we heard about it in the first episode is really good. And once again, I really appreciate that Amazon has all of this trivia ahead of time so that it tells you that it's a small country that runs along the foothills of the Mountains of Mist. It's a hereditary monarchy that they must be advised by a council of nobility and wealthy merchants. It's actively been protecting itself from being absorbed by its larger neighbor, Amadecia, the seat of, its, of the infamous Children of the Light. Nice. Okay. In the books, it seems like Altara and Murindy are more struggling with white cloak incursions just because they are far weaker thrones than Gildan. But having this be a narrative where Amadecia is trying to incur you know, in, has incursions into Gildon is better narratively. It works really well for the story. <laughs> Appreciate that they have the king fighting with his men. Also, Loghain's channeling looks great. Love that they have the taint threaded through with the flows. We had already gotten clues of that from the little teasers that we had gotten. The colors, everything is so clear. The brightness that we have here with the dust and just the colors of the castle, all of the sort of 
hands and then like the dark maroon of his uh, surcoat and then of course the blood and the fact that his armor is all battered it looks really good and then the acting is great like the soldiers looked generally terrified but also determined and then Loghain looks scary I'm really interested to see how they embody him will he have a sense of nobility will he be able to be a sympathetic character or will he not be sympathetic yet and will that not be something that they will bring into account until later how complicated is he going to be i'm really excited to see oh here he is the crown but there's a crown named to the dragon reborn you really believe it don't you be done with it slogan i sent word to the white tower Yes, I will come for you. Those women. They should be following me. Not fighting me. Okay, he's already crazy. Or at least he's already starting to hear voices. It feels a little ableist to be throwing around words like crazy so easy. I do it without thinking partly because I'm a little bit crazy and so having a verifiable mental illness I don't think about it too much because I feel comfortable doing so and I'm going to hold on to that. I feel perfectly within my rights. He's great. We never got any real dialogue. We only had him like brooding in a cage or whatever, you know, and just he's great. Just a couple of words of dialogue and his presence and everything. He looks wonderful. You've got my way. Okay, that was incredible, like goosebump raising incredible. I'm interested if they're gonna show Luce Theron talking to Rand in the way that they're showing Loghain's people who are talking to him that way. The fact that he is rising above his insanity, he didn't even look like he was struggling with the voices telling him to hurt other people. In book two, when uh, Gowan sees a gentle Loghain in the tower and he's feeling pity and Galad is just kind of like, yeah, whatevs. And Gowan is like, but men followed him. And so you never see the backstory of Loghain, but you, you, you hear that, yeah, he managed to inspire many followers. So seeing this laid out where it's sort of like, you know, he rises above any kind of insanity or any lower impulses, despite the fact that obviously he was harmed and betrayed by people that he loved, who were close to him, his sister, his parents. And instead of harming this king, you know, he turns the dagger like he's going, you know, turns the dagger in his hand like he's going to stab him, but makes him drop it instead. Like, I was expecting him to harm him, but he dropped it. And then I was expecting him to use the flows that were holding him to crush him or harm him. So the fact that he healed him instead, and you see the change in the king, and how, you know, he seems like he believes. The look of, like, true believer at that point. This is brilliantly done. I'm already so invested in this episode. From the colors, the the cinematography, the flying over the architecture of the castle, the set, all of it. And then Alfaro Morte, is, his embodiment is so brilliant. And the fact that we hadn't gotten any dialogue from him before, he's amazing. Nine looks angry. Also loving these tents, so very descriptive of the kind of like rich, luxurious tents. 
that he describes in the books. That one's so bad it left a scar. Thank you, Karenny. I want to meet this false dragon. He may be false, but there are thousands following him. True believers. I heard he conquered half of Gaelden and had the king himself at his back. Oh. And the madness. How far gone is he? He's the same as any man who can channel. Let me share the burden. That's more I for you. Selfless to a fault. Way to be an asshole, Leandrin. We can't afford any gaps in the shield. Leandrin will wait to drop hers until yours is in place. You feel it now? That's half his power. She looks alarmed. That's good. They have that whole look of doubt on her face. I really appreciate that. And the Amalan seat, still seated. Foreshadowing. The of Moraine, though. You know, I never really understood your taste in traveling companions. Those axes are terrible. It's hard having a conversation with someone who would say it. Really interesting to listen to kind of the Aes Sedai and Warder gossip. This is such a different flavor from the previous episodes that were kind of focused on the companions, the Emmons Fielders. I'm assuming that we're going to cut back to them, but having this episode start out, especially for people who've been loving the richness of the world building, this is great. I'm loving it. I'm, you know, obviously very well versed in this world, but loving this really loving listening to the Aes Sedai kind of shit talk Moraine or at least have feelings. They all seem to have feelings and opinions and I'm very interested in hearing all of their opinions and I'm looking forward to watching the react videos for the people who don't know the series because hearing all of their opinions and their impressions, the fresh eyes, is so great. The is gaining traction with you. We won't gentle again without the trial. Rumor has it the Reds have been doing just that across the countryside. Okay. So nice little setup there because in the first episode, second scene, we saw Leandrin doing what Stepan, I believe is uh, Karenna's warder's name, says that she's been doing. So I'm wondering if she is going to, I'm assuming, we know Loghain escapes, I'm assuming that that happens because Leandrin lets it happen, and I'm wondering if she does it less from, you know, a way to, like, aid the Dark One, and more just as a way to aid in her desire that they gentle him on the spot, and I'm wondering if that's what happens, and that's why they all look like they're in so much trouble in the scene that we get in the trailer, where they're all being called in their very best clothing to the Hall of the Tower, and they all look like they're in trouble. Okay, traveling people all loading up their wagons and everything. Poor Perrin. How'd you sleep? I appreciate that. I like that they have Egwene really show her like determination to have this sort of sense of not just equality with Perrin, but her determination that she will protect him just as much as he will protect her. Your bandits are not very good ones. That's a fair point. They have him walking pretty good on that leg. Hey, girl, shh. Did they steal those horses? I wondered if Rand was going to go back for his coat and his bow. So obviously t they took the time to snag their shit and steal some horses or something. What's going on with you? What if he killed her to make us trust him? Well, that would be smart. <laughs> True. Maybe there's some hope for you after all. Oh, snap. That a dragon could be one of five of us. Me, you, Aaron, Gwen. Who else? 
Oh, I thought she meant nine, Eve. It's like holding a cat in a bath. <laughs> I presume Karenne has asked you to use our friendship to get information out of him. You could have easily been blue or sure. Please. One water would never do. <laughs> when I chose green, I thought it was so heroic. This is so great. They're doing such a good job of, like, giving information about the Ajas. The Battle Lajah. Warriors strain to defend humanity from the Dark One at the last battle. <laughs> Less talking, more shielding. I think I figured out why the old wisdom who walked to Tarvalon when she was 13 and ended up getting turned away with her ragged clothes and her peasant accent. And I was like, that doesn't fit canon. It didn't occur to me at the time. Maybe they didn't turn her away out of a sense of elitism. I mean, it is elitism. They turned her away because she was a wilder. And that didn't occur to me before. I was just kind of like, why would they turn away someone who could channel? They want everybody. And it couldn't have been because she was poor because Swan is the Amaralyn seat. And they show her with those really bad tattoos. Obviously, they're still having her come from nothing, you know. So I think it must have been because she was a wilder. And they are very eh, about wilders. Somebody else, I can't remember where, who made some point about Nynaeve wearing both yellow and green, which, yeah, they're doing a great job with just foreshadowing. And once again, I really love the way this camp is set up. He describes camps so often in the books, military camps, but particularly because the Rebel Ice that I spend so much time camping and their tents are always so luxurious. Uh, so having these tents filled with so many luxurious bedding and carpets and chairs and chests and everything is just it fits so well with the stories and i'm digging it i like your fray Ugh. sorry if i'm mispronouncing it i can't quite place the accent that's because you haven't heard me speak oh snap you go Niney. so i think i'll ask questions first depending on how well you answer maybe i'll give you what you want oh oh Okay, I have loved Zoe from the beginning, you know, and she's playing naive, like, she can't show the nuance with the inner narrative, so she can't show that she's actually really lacking in self-confidence. I watched an interview that uh, Matt Hatch with the Dusty Wheel did with her where she was talking about how she is such a confident person, and truthfully, that's not the case. She's a person who lacks confidence and powers through that with just anger and you know eventually gains confidence and doesn't have to be so angry but you can't show the torture in her narrative that Nynaeve has that makes her so frustrating to read so often so playing her just at face value with so confident and basically giving no fucks and this expression on Leandrin's face right now because you can tell she was not expecting this village woman to just be so coolly just kind of like you know oh well if you do what I tell you and you know answer what I like you know as I like I might give you what you want maybe once again the non the non-book readers that I've watched they all love her you know everybody loves her um, she steals the show. I really appreciate that they have her listed as the third lead actor for the intro. She deserves it. She's amazing. How long have you known Moraine? So Leandrin smiles because she's like, I can manipulate this person to turn her against Moraine. I believe I watched a trailer for the fourth episode and I believe she says to Lon that Leandrin is a snake because obviously she is. It'll be easier to just off. This mare's afraid of her own shadow. She doesn't like your daggers. The strangers in his woods. We were going to rest in your barn just for the night. You'd have never known we were there. And if I wanted to kill you, I'd have kept my mouth shut just now. Great leadership, Rand. Plenty of space in the barn. 
Well, the stables are mucked out. And she chose the blue Aja, which fits really. They're nothing more than little spies who exaggerate their own importance. The red tent is open to all women. Feel free to join us for dinner. That woman's a snake. You are welcome, Lord Elfly. If you promise not to shove him into it. <laughs> Belief in its time falls to the dirt that nourishes the tree, that in its time grows the leaf again. Picked up a weapon, a sword, bow and arrow, an axe. Poor parent. And tell me, has your life been better? I wonder if Big Wayne knows. Like it's legit poisoning him. You can date Brigitte back for that. She can oh. text me when Ephraim wants to sleep. That's so smart. They're doing so many smart little things to like insert foreshadowing and little bits and pieces of like lore in order to bring new characters in. Well, that makes me feel really good. Maybe he caught something in Green Spring. I knew another lad the same way. Nobody could figure out what happened. Until he threw a rock. Without using his hands. But whatever we do, we have to keep man away from those women. We call ourselves Cleman. Because a silly name makes us less frightening. <laughs> I like that they acknowledge that the name Glee Man is silly. Oh, Maureen's boots are amazing. I tracked him. <laughs> I like her. <laughs> you orders are more fun than you look. Except me, of course. I look fun. They look <laughs> so <laughs> gay. <laughs> I like how, like, I knew that Alana with Yvonne and Maxim, I knew that she was basically, like, sexually involved with both of them. I didn't realize that they were going to have the two of them be bisexual as well and obviously be very close and into each other. So I love that. It's wonderful. Um, they're not only queer, they're obviously queer. And, you know, not just in their you know, obvious physical closeness, but just a lot of people don't realize that um, bisexual people can present in obviously queer ways, whether bisexual males sometimes, you know, be, are confused for being just gay because they, you know, have very gay mannerisms or just sound very gay, or, you know, bisexual women like myself look just like ginormous lesbians. And, you know, that happens a lot of times and it's part of bisexual erasure. Either bisexual people are assumed to be heterosexual because they just seem straight or they're assumed to be gay because they look gay. Um, so Alana's warders looked very gay there. And so I really appreciated that they're kind of doing their uh, thruple in a very just everybody into everybody. Um, I love it. Way to make it gay or rave. Is he as strong as he went? I don't know. I don't think so. But I don't know. Oh, interesting. Okay. I shouldn't have had a drink. You always get emotional when I drink. <laughs> Everyone keeps talking about the song. It's not 
everything. Silly tradition. Also, I love how they're doing all the foreshadowing with Aram being kind of meh about the way of the leaf with his whole like, you know, you said that every time I lost a toy as a kid, none of them have come back, or the song is a silly tradition. Obviously, they're going to have him come back, and he is going to be the tinker with the sword, and good. Well, the harmony to the world. You don't believe it? There's a lot I believe in. But only old fools and children believe in the song. It's like the Rainbow Gathering. It took you half the night to work that up, didn't it? That's so cute. Oh. Okay, this must be where the attack comes. It's got great tents. Look at him. If he were to break out, the three oaths would allow us to gentle him. The White Tower and the women within it have stood for 3,000 years. Not because we do what is expedient, but because we do what is right. Red should be the one reminding me of that. And how? You pray often. I need to. I'm back because it cut me off or my laptop shut down. So I'm going to watch the rest of this. There's 10 or 15 minutes left and. Oh, snap. What is it? My boards. Oh. No army can get past seven full sisters. Oh, shit. Okay, that whipping the arrows around in midair was pretty badass. Nice. Oh, fuck yeah, mighty. Fuck yeah, melting this cage. Oh, that was amazing. Again and again. To learn. 
more is smooth. The wheel doesn't want anything. What do you want? I want you to know that the voices in your head, those are the whispers of madness. And as strong as you are, your power is a trickle. A pinprick of candlelight against the raging sun that will be the dragon reborn. Like a boss. Oh, I was hoping she'd live. This is like goosebumpy. Oh, like a boss. And he's gonna heal them all, I bet. Either he's gonna heal them all or she'll heal them. Oh, she'll do it. Okay, that seemed a little bit extra in the sense that she should have had to, you know, you, you should have to be able to touch and lay on hands for just kind of like having a giant mana burst and basically everyone is suddenly healed. Seems much. Him being frightened? I dig it. This kind of setup for the two of them, because I'm assuming that we're going to have, you know, our whole fire and spirit moment later on. I like the fact that they're meeting beforehand. The mana burst is cheesy, but whatever, it's extra. And I kind of like them seeing, like, holy shit. Like, you know, especially because Maureen distracted him by being like, you know, yeah, you, you ain't got shit compared to what the dragon's gonna have. You know, you're, you're a baby, you're a baby dragon. So... We're gonna gentle him on the stuff. Okay, that's beautifully, beautifully filmed and really kind of tragic. She's such an asshole. And Maureen looks guilty. That was really, really good. I think that that was probably the best episode so far. I want to say that I wished that they had developed Loghain's arc over a longer episode. And, you know, they may do. It makes sense that they would fill in his backstory later on. I'm assuming we're going to get more flashbacks. I'm still holding out that they're going to do backfill for Layla. It sounds like we're gonna get a flashback to Winter Night um, and Rand and Tam on the road. Um, I don't think that they're gonna do us dirty and not give us that scene. And I like flashback backfill. It, it keeps the story fresh and uh, keeps things from seeming like too much exposition. So I'm here for it. This was a beautiful episode. So good. Um, so definitely, definitely like give it a 9 out of 10. Thank you for turning in to the YouTube version of Podcast of the Dragon. This has been my react to the fourth episode of season one of The Wheel of Time on Prime, The Dragon Reborn. 
this was amazing. This show is really good, and I'm loving it. Take care, everybody.